Archon, Shalom, Wam, Shalom, Wam, Ezra, Shalom, Wam, Sator, Shaz, Yasha, Allah, Gimel, of course, all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bashem, Mahashi, Yaku, and Malaki, Havashah. That's all praises, honor, glorification unto the Most High God, Yahweh. In the name of His own begun, Son, Yahweh, this is Brother Yasha, Allah, coming back, Shah, yet another video through the Spirit and Power of Yahweh, Bahashim, Masha, Wam, Malaki, Havashah. All right, Shalom, Wam, Shalom, Wam. So I'm getting straight into this. This is going into the book of Genesis, chapter 26, and verses uh, 12 on down. Right now, I'm just say this real quick. When whenever you read the scriptures, uh, whenever you read the Old Testament, uh, known also as uh, the Hebrew Bible, right, by certain biblical scholars, and also they'll they'll call it the, the Tanakh in the Hebrew, right, the Tanakh, aka the Hebrew Bible, right. You would even have it. They would divide it into certain parts. Like for example, the first five books of Moses, which would be the first five books of the of the Bible would be labeled as what genesis 8 uh, or or the, the names of it would be what genesis exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy these are the first five books of moses right and that would be labeled as what the torah that's one section of the bible right then you also have other sections of it for example uh, even of the old testament you have the writings which are what the the narratives you have first kings second kings first chronicles second chronicles first samuel second samuel ruth Judges, Joshua, these are known as the writings because it can contain a lot of the history of Israel, right? And also of the other nations, right? Because remember, the scriptures is doesn't only contain the, the history of Israel, although it does have the history of, of Israel in there. It also can, uh, uh, covers Israel uh, uh, history outside of Israel. Like, for example, the Grecian Empire, uh, the Roman Empire. It covers the uh, Babylonian Empire and parts of the Persian and Median Empire, et cetera, et cetera. All right. But even when you read the, the writings, it's on a physical level, right? This, uh, you know, this king did this, et cetera, et cetera, right? This man uh, grew to be this old, et cetera, et cetera. These are the writings, his records, right? But even if you're reading these plain scriptures, you, you can even look at certain scriptures on a physical, a salaki, on a spiritual level. If you do have the eye salve and the spirit of the most high on, upon you, right? So let's go to Genesis chapter 26 and verse 12, right? It says, then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. So Isaac in this, in this case, right? On one fold represents what? The elect. Because guess what? The elect, they're going to be sowing in the land, right? They're going to be sowing. They're going to be putting in the work. All right, because Isaac, remember, on a physical level, this even though these scriptures is on a physical level, right? Isaac was sown in the land. The Lord blessed him. The Lord was blessing Isaac, and he became uh, uh, richer and richer, all right? Like his forefather Abraham, right? And it, uh, it's like his father Abraham. So <clears throat> literally, this is on a, a literal and physical level. But what, I, like I said, like, right, right, let's go to the book of Job, chapter 11 and, and verse 6 real quick. Right, Job chapter 11 and verse 6. It says, And that he will show these the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacted of thee less than thy iniquity deserved. So the script the uh the scriptures, these verses are double to that which is. Okay? The double to that to that which is. It's on the physical level. You can add the physical application as well as the spiritual application to a lot of these scriptures, right? So let's go to Genesis, back to Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. It says, Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. So he was sowing in the land. Isaac in this um, representation or in this scripture would also represent what? The elect, because they're sowing, right? Let's go to the book of uh, James, right? Slaki, actually, let's go to uh, Galatians. Let's show you that the elect... Is going to be uh sowing, right? Genesis or Slaki, uh Galatians chapter six and verse number seven. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So your sowing represents your works. <coughs> and we also pull that out on Esau as well. That whatever a man sows, that's what he's gonna reap. You reap what you sow. That's the saying even in the world. So your sowing is just a representation in a in a, um, basically a metaphor for your works, whatever your works are, right? And it's really going into um, when you get into it, like the sowing, right? Isaac sowing in the land, that's going into doing the work. 
because remember when we're planting seeds that's that's planting seeds that's teaching right because you have because the lord commanded us to go out into the highways and hedges right and also in and teach and and uh our people right uh you also have the parable of the sower that's the book of mark chapter four right and that sower the sower sower of the word right it'll tell you that in the book of mark chapter four verse 14 on down right and so uh we're what are we doing we're sowing Right. Whenever we make videos, that's so that's part of doing the work, you know, that's part of planting and uh, planting a seed. Also, what going out in the highways and byways and teaching our people that's sowing, you know, on a spiritual level, because you're planting a seed into a brother or a sister and you're and you're wanting to let that seed grow. You're 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 um, watering it, you're nourishing it and you pray to the most high that the Lord increases that seed and that it may grow into a good uh, um, a good tree and bring forth fruit. Verse eight, but he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sowed to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So if you sow to the flesh, you're gonna get the uh, things of the flesh back, right? It says, shall reap corruption, you're gonna get corruption back. If you sow to the flesh, you're gonna get fleshly things and we don't want fleshly things, man. Right? Right, you're gonna get the fleshly reward, which is corruption, because that's where the flesh leads you. It just leads you to corruption and death, right, and destruction. See, certain men they they sow to the flesh. Those these are people in the world, right? The damn working out twenty four seven, you know. Uh, uh, they just go to work. They they go to their so called job, and you know they just live their lives, and they're sowing to the flesh. They're putting in so much work for the flesh. And so what are they going to reap? They're going to reap what? Not not life everlasting, not the kingdom of heaven, but corruption, you know? But it says, but, but he that sowed to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life, life everlasting. So that's what your reward is going to be if you sow to the spirit, right? And where's the spirit of the most high dwell? In these scriptures, right? Verse 9, and in you if you're in the truth. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So the Lord said, let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in calling brothers. Let us not be weary in, in reading. Let us not be weary in doing the work of the Most High, right? Because what? For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. What are we going to reap, right? The reward is the kingdom of heaven. You understand? The, re the reward is life everlasting. Re the reward is peace upon the earth. The reward is dominion. You know, and that's what you're going to reap if you keep sowing to the spirit, if you keep sowing the good, the good works. Right. If you keep teaching, if you keep exhortating, if you keep doing the uh, the good works. So the reap, the um, the sowing, even in the book of Genesis, chapter 26, and verse 12, it represents what? Doing the work of the Lord. Right. And read that again. It says, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. I'm going to go to the um, book of. <laughs> I'm going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians. It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 5. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? So who is Paul? Who is Apollos? Right? We shouldn't uphold men. Right? But we should uphold Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah. Who am I? Right? Who is who is anybody? Who is any brother, man? Right? We're just ministers of the Most High God. The Lord gave us this ability to even teach. Right? Verse six. I have a planted, I have planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. So that's also um, what sowing represents in the scriptures. You know, you're planting spiritual seeds when you're teaching a brother, when you're making a video, etc. Right? That's you planting the seed right there. It says, but the most high gave the increase. And even on a, on, on a physical level, if you plant seeds into the ground and you water it, that's all you can do, really. And just and give it the light. But it, it's up to the most high for that seed to grow or not. If he wants that seed to grow or not into a beautiful tree, it's up to the most high. The most high gives the increase. You can plant damn 7,000 seeds and water all those 7,000 seeds. If the most high doesn't want those seeds to grow, it's not going to grow. All right. So even on a spiritual level, you can teach 7,000 brothers and 7,000 sisters. Right. But if the most high doesn't want them to come to the truth, they're not going to come to the truth. Verse seven, 
So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but the most high that giveth the increase. So it doesn't matter, you know, who's watering it. It doesn't matter who's who's planting the seeds either. Because it's up, it's really the most high, right? It's really all of the most high. That's why the most high should give all all honor, all honor and all, uh, glory and praise. Right? Verse 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So that's the point that we also want to get to. Every man is going to get according to his own labor and according to his own work. All right. So let's go back to this in Genesis 26, verse 12. It says, then Isaac sold in that land. Right. Isaac, again, represents the elect on a, on a spiritual level. The elect, they're sowing in this land that we're in right now, in the land, in this earth. Right. We're sowing. We're, and, we, and we hope to be the elect, but we're sowing right now. We're teaching, we're doing videos, we're doing the work of the Lord, right? And received in the same year and hundredfold in the Lord, bless them. So in this same year, if you have ears to hear, in this same year, in the same day, if you have ears to hear, referring to the book of Matthew 20th chapter in that parable, it literally, we're going to receive, right? If we're part of that number, we're, we're going to receive a hundredfold, Okay for our reward our reward because the lord is 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 faithful he's not going to forget your uh labor all right he's not just going to throw that off after you have done all this labor you know the lord's not just going to cast that off and forget about it all right um let's go to the book of matthew real quick this, uh this is the book of matthew chapter 19. you're going to receive a hundredfold just like how isaac did isaac he received a hundredfold right of all the labor that he did, right? It's the book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse number 29. And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So the Lord said that everybody that forsakes, you know, what they had going in the world, et cetera, et cetera, to do the work of the Lord, you're going to receive a hundredfold. Right, he said that you're going to receive a hundredfold. You're going to receive a hundredfold. Damn, uh, gold money, you know, uh, uh, women, uh, um, you know, on a righteous level, um, you know, families, etc. Any anything that you left behind, guess what? You're going to receive a hundredfold in the kingdom of heaven because you wanted to do this work, right? And did not care for that, you know. So the Lord said you're going to receive a hundredfold, right? And that's spiritual. Genesis chapter twenty six verse twelve is spiritual, right? Um, let's go back to that. Genesis 26 and verse 13. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. So the Lord said that Isaac was waxing great and that he went forward. He never went backward, man. He never went backward. He always went forward, right? And, it's, and it says what? And grew until he became very great. And so we want that, we want that to happen to us. We want the Lord to increase us. And never let us go backward, right? We shouldn't be those people that go backward. You know, we're waxing mightier, mightier, mightier. Then we stop at one point and then start going back down. No, we don't want that to happen to us. You know, we don't want to uh, want that to happen to us. We always want to go forward and keep growing in this thing, you know? And grew until he became very great. You know, we want to grow until we're uh, we're very great, you know? In the kingdom of heaven as well, right? We want to be very great. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter uh, 25. The Lord said that certain men are going to uh, have the dominion over uh, 10 cities. It's the book of uh, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21. It says, um, <clears throat> his Lord said unto him, well, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord, of thy Lord. You see that? So the Lord said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what we want to hear when it's all said and done. You know, thou has been faithful over a few things, right? Meaning what? In the world, in, you know, in the world or uh, in the truth, you were faithful over a few things. You know, you, you kept doing the videos, right? You kept going out there in the highways and byways, even though... Even on days in which there were no, there was nobody to be found out there. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. 
we were faithful over a few things. You know, you had faith in me. You had faith in Yahweh, right? You were faithful in uh, in a few things, right? It says, thou has been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. So we want to also be ruler over many things. And guess what? Isaac was also ruler over many things. When it says that the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great, guess what? He was also ruler over many things. The Lord made him a ruler over many things. The Lord uh, increased his riches. The Lord increased Isaac's wisdom, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what is going to happen to the elect. Lord willing, we're part of that number, right? And we're reading it in the scriptures right now. It says, I will make thee a ruler over many things, enter down to the joy of thy Lord, right? So let's go to this. Genesis chapter 26, right? Hold on. I believe I, I want to preach up in Philippians. I think I might want to get this uh, in Philippians, right? It's the book of Philippians, right? Chapter 3 and verse number uh, 12, right? It says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Mahashiach Yahweh So we don't think ourselves we have already attained, right? We haven't gotten, gotten the kingdom yet. You know, that's when we have attained, when we got the kingdom, right? Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, right? So we, you know, we forget those things that are behind. We forget about the world, right? We forget the life that we lived in the world, right? And we uh, reach, we reach forth unto those things which are before us, which is the front, right? Verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of, Maha, of the Mosai and Mahashiach Yahweh all right? So it says, I press toward the mark. And, and pressing toward the mark, guess what? The mark is going to be right in front of you. It's not behind you. Guess because guess what? We're in a race, right? We're in a race, so we can't be looking back, can't be looking to the sides. You know what I'm saying? We got to be focused on the kingdom of heaven. All right. It says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of, Mah of the most high Mahashiach Yahweh. So let's go back to this in Genesis chapter 24 or 26, verse 13. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. And for he had possession of flocks. And possession of her herds and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him, for all the wells which his father's uh, servants had dig in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with with earth. You see that? But I want to touch on verse fourteen when it says he had possession of flocks and a possession of her herds and great store of servants. So the Lord, hey, guess what? Isaac he had all that, and the Lord gave. Gave that to him, man. He had possession of flocks, possession of herds. In the kingdom of heaven, guess what? You're going to have all that. You're going to have possession of flocks and herds. You're going to have uh, your your damn own farms and all this stuff. You're going to have your own plantation. Some some men will have their own plantation in the kingdom of heaven, right? Filled with slaves, their own slaves, man, of the of, of the other nations. That's what the Lord said. Is you know uh, you're going to have. Right? Did not the Lord say that uh, he that overcometh shall inherit all things? All right? Let's go to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21 and verse number uh, 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So the Lord said that he that overcometh shall inherit all things. You know? All things. Right? Everything upon earth, because guess what? The earth was made for the uh, the sake of Israel, right? Let's go to that real quick. This is the book of 2nd Nezers, chapter 7, right? 2nd Nezers, chapter 7, and verse 10. And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sake I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. So, um... So Khan, so basically uh Israel, the the sake of uh, of the world is made for the sake of Israel, right? The world was made for Israel. All right. And it pleased the Lord to give Israel this whole earth. You know, the Lord even said in the book of Deuteronomy, what's wherever your foot uh 
the soul your foot touches, that's yours. All right. So the Lord said that he that overcomes shall inherit all things, even the flocks and even the herds, right? Even that Isaac had. And this isn't the kingdom yet, you know? What we're reading in Genesis 26, it's just the Genesis. It wasn't the kingdom of heaven. So how much more shall ye shall uh, uh, the elect inherit? If if Isaac had all this and he waxed very, very mighty on a physical level, right? And on a spiritual level, then how much more shall the elect inherit in the kingdom of heaven? Remember, the Lord even said, I have not seen nor ear heard the things which the most I have prepared for those that love him in the book of 1 Corinthians. All right, I'm going to get that real quick and then we're going to go back to that. All right. So you're going to have much more, even much more than Isaac, right? The elect is going to have much more than Isaac, you know, because it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God have prepared for them that love him. Okay. Meaning it hasn't even come to their mind. Whatever you're thinking in your mind about how much you're going to have in the kingdom of heaven is going to even be more than that. All right, Genesis chapter 26, verse 14. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants, right? Because he had a great store of servants, man. You're going to have servants in the kingdom of heaven as well, right? If you're part of that number. And the Philistines envied him. So the, hey, guess what? The other nations envied Isaac, man, right? The sons of men, they envied Isaac. Guess what? The, the other nations, they're going to envy you in the kingdom of heaven as well. You riding on your fresh new chariot, right? While they have to work sun up to sun up, they're going to be envying you. Just like how Israel envies uh, uh, the other nations right now and envy Esau. It's going to be the same thing, but the tables are going to turn. Second uh, Ezra chapter 2, right? Second Ezra chapter 2. In verse 27, be not weary for the for when the day of trouble and, and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. So you're going to have abundance in the kingdom of heaven. All right. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall not be able to do anything against thee. Say the Lord, it's lock you, right? So it says the the heathen shall envy thee, man. All right? The heathen are is going to envy you. The heathen right now, they don't have really anything to envy us about because we're on the bottom and they're on the top, right? They get all, they get everything right now, you know? They rule the world. They control the earth right now, the heathen, you know? They, uh, it'll tell you that in the book of Second Ezra, chapter uh, 3 and verse um, 33. And yet their reward appear not, and their labor have no fruit. For I have gone here and there through the heathen. And I see that they flow in wealth and think not upon thy commandments. So the heathen, they flow in wealth. Okay? Just like how you flow in bills and you can't pay them, they flow in wealth. All right? But they, this is their kingdom right now. Our kingdom is in the world to come. And so in the world to come, in, in that kingdom, guess what? They're, they're going to be flowing in damn debt. They're going to be flowing in, in, in pain and tribulation. Well, you're going to be flowing in, in wealth. So that's why they're going to envy you. All right. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Uh, right. Actually, let's go to Sirach chapter 9. All right. So book of Sirach chapter 9 and verse number uh, 11. Envy not the glory of the sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. So guess what? For the heathen, it's not going to be a sinner. Right. It's not going to be a sinner. You know, it's going to be envy not, you know, uh, uh, just like how because Israel right now, they envy sinners. You know, sometimes you might envy a sinner because because in the book of Sirach, chapter 20, it will tell you that a sinner has a good success in evil things. Uh, let's go to that. Sirach, chapter 20 and verse. Um, actually, hold on. It might be 27. Uh, OK, it's lucky. Right. Sirach 20. In verse 9, Khan, all praises says, There is a sinner that have good success in evil things, and there is a gain that turn it to loss. So there's a sinner that have good success in evil things. Whatever evil that uh, the sinner does, he has good success in it, right? For example, you know, Esau, he might have good success in damn extortion, you know? 
he has good success in that. He's very, very crafty. And, you know, the Lord, you know, the Lord blesses him with his ability to exhort, right, or, or uh, extort um, his uh, um, uh, damn Israel, you know, and, and take money for him, right, and cheat them out, you know. The Lord, he can give you uh, um, good, uh, good success in evil things, you know. A, a, a certain pastor, he might be very, very persuasive in getting you to get give your money, right, into the collection plate. He might even shame you if you don't. And and guess what? That money's not going to anything else. It's going to his own pockets. And he's going to be using that to damn uh, shape up his Mercedes, right? So there's this good success. There's a sinner that have good success in evil things that there's a gain that turned into loss. You might be envying a damn uh, drug dealer because he has everything, you know? He has all the cars. He has all the damn women. He has all the damn watches and all this other stuff. These celebrities, they flow in wealth, all right? They have more than they, they could wish for. Hey, Floyd Mayweather, what, Floyd Mayweather, you've spent damn $18 million on your watch, and you can't even get uh, some of your bills paid working two jobs. So, you know, certain certain men within Israel, you might even, um, you might envy them. But the Lord said, envy not the glory of the sinner. For thou knowest not what shall be his end, because guess what? In the kingdom of heaven, all right? The heathen, they're going to be on the bottom, and the Israel is going to be on top. All right, so it's going to be the it's going to be the same exact opposite. These heathen, they're going to be envying you in the kingdom of heaven, while you flow in your abundance of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and also physical riches. All right, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter sixteen. It's the book of Luke, chapter sixteen. And verse 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. So this rich man that fared sumptuously, uh, sumptuously every day is really going into Esau because it will tell you that he's clothed in purple. You can go to Revelation chapter 17. This purple, right, it will tell you that the um, the whore was wearing purple uh, and scarlet, right, which were two um, colors in the ancient world which was hard to obtain and only kings wore, right? They, uh, it'll tell you that in the book of, um, first Maccabees chapter five or Salaki, uh, eight, All right? It's the book of first Maccabees chapter eight, All right? Uh, first Maccabees chapter eight and, uh, um, let's see where I want to start at. Where's this verse at? Um. Con, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse uh, 13. So this is going into the Roman Empire. All right, it's going into the Roman Empire. So this is how you know the Bible is real, though. Okay, because this is for real. When he said the Roman Empire, um, they had a Senate and all that other stuff, and, and the scriptures actually mentioned that. 1 Maccabees chapter 8, verse 13. Also that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reigned, and whom they would, again, they would, they displace. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. So Rome was growing in power right now, uh, in uh, in First Maccabees. Verse 14. Yet for all this, none of them wore a crown or was clothed in purple to be magnified thereby. So none wore purple. All right. So what, what does that mean? In the, in the uh, Senate House, you have basically a president or you would have uh, one elect person in, in the Roman... Um, empire to govern the 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 senate house or, or the house of representatives or you know uh, stuff like that it's, it's similar to america right because you look at the presidents now and the prime ministers none of them wear purple purple like how the kings wore purple back in the ancient world the monarch will wear purple be clothed in fine linen and all this other stuff you know in the roman empire you didn't have it was not so you know they would wear like this damn gown and all this other stuff and they would wear uh, you know, like nowadays, they were, uh, you know, the president's wearing the damn suit and tie and all this other stuff, right? So they're not being clothed in purple, even though they have great wealth and authority. They're not wearing purple, though, because certain ancient kings uh, in the ancient world, they will wear purple, which will signify that they're rich and that they have great authority and power. So going back to um, Luke, 
chapter 16 and verse 19, it says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. I mean, he was just living in wealth every day. Let's talk about Esau on a spiritual level. Verse 20, And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus who was laid at his gate full of sores. So this beggar named Lazarus represents Israel on a, on a physical level, right? And on a, sp a spiritual level because Israel is spiritually, it's lucky, it's, it's physically poor, you know? Last, and you know, we're poor, all right? We can't get by. We It's hard for us to get by in this society. Verse 21, and desiring to be fed with the with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. So you trust, you trust you're trying to get anything. You're trying to get the damn stimulus, stimulus package. You're trying to get anything from uh, from damn Esau, right? Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So these that that uh, symbolizes the other nations coming in uh, and afflicting your pain and uh, increasing um, your affliction, essentially. Verse 21 or 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was uh, and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and see if Abraham afar off and Lazarus his in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And said, Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool, cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. All right. But Abraham said, remember, so this flame that he's talking about is not talking about actual, you know, like this place underground where Satan dwelleth and he's poking you with a pitchfork and you're dying. You know what I'm saying? But you're not dead. Right. Or you're dead, but you're you feel pain, but you're conscious. Basically, the, the Christian uh, um, doctrine perspective that uh, of hell is not in the scriptures, man. All right. It's not Luke chapter 16 because it doesn't even line up with Luke chapter 16. It doesn't make sense if it even was that. Right. But essentially what this flame is in this hell, when it says, you know, Lazarus lift up his eyes in hell, meaning he was in captivity. Right. He was in captivity. Because Esau is going to go into captivity, all right, under the Israelites. And he wanted his captivity to be lessened, verse 25. Just like how Cain wanted his judgment to be lessened, right? He said, oh, my, my punishment is greater than I can bear in Genesis chapter 4, all right? That's what Esau does. You know, he tries to lessen his affliction even though he, he damn knew that he was wrong, verse 25, right? It says, but Abraham said... Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received it, receivest thou uh, thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Right? So, in uh, Lazarus's um, uh, lifetime, he was going through hell, right? He was poor, et cetera, et cetera. And also the rich man, but he, the, Slaki, but the rich man, he was fair and sumptuously every day. He was living good, man. He, he had riches. So, you know, eventually those tables are going to turn. You know, uh, these other nations, Esau is going to be in captivity. They're going to be envying us, right? Because we're going to be living good in the kingdom of heaven. We're willing to part of that number of the elect. All right. So going back to this, in Genesis chapter 26, I want to close this out. Uh, Genesis chapter 26. All right. It's also on a spiritual level, man. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 14, but he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants and the Philistines envied him. So all this is also is on a physical level, but it's also can be seen on a spiritual level, man. All right. All right. So Khan, with that, all praise to Yahweh Bashim Mashak, Wallaki Habashah. Lord willing, this was edifying. Right. Brother Yasha Allah. Shalom.